Well, welcome back to Odd Socks. I have been away for a few days. I decided I wanted a little break and a little holiday. So I did a little bit of a fishing holiday by the sea and I did catch the sun a little bit. In fact, I think I got a bit burned. But about five, six days away from the allotment and it has gone wild in that small amount of time that I've actually been away. Now, don't get me wrong, I haven't been on the ball as much as previous years on this allotment. But in the last few days of us not coming down here, things really have either grown or bolted or starting to die back at least. Now, it's a shame, because, but it's my own fault. All the sweet peas have now gone to seed. So the negatives of that, obviously, they won't carry on flowering. But that is my fault. I had not picked the flowers enough through the whole time. And these ones are definitely going to seed and these will be pulled quite soon. And the ones at the back are all starting to turn too, which is a shame. But again, it's my fault, not because of the weird weather that we're actually having this year. Now, this is the first morning back after having some time away. And it could always be worse, but there is lots of things here that is either ready to harvest or to pull up to make room for future growings. Now, I have got some things in the greenhouse that are ready to go out. I have some swedes, some car robies, and I think some other greens and brassicas. But the one thing I still have not done, which I really do need to focus on, is sowing a lot of my plants for my winter use. Now you think on a, well, what was a sunny day, but now it's very cloudy, that you wouldn't be thinking about the winter sowings. But there is lots of things that you can grow through the winter, and I really do need to focus on this over the next week or two. But I've got to go get compost. I have no compost that I can use for my seed sowings. So that's something I'll have to do over the next few days. Now, <laughs> this mass, this big patch, this is randomness. This is a few mange too, which absolutely tastes fantastic. But in the compost that we used, which was some of our own last year, in this particular bay, we actually put a lot of our tomato plants at the end of the year into that bay. And as you can see, there was an awful lot of seeds in there. Now I thought I took out a load of the tomatoes and not put them into the compost bay. The bay we used is much smaller than our bigger bays, which get much, much hotter. So the seeds are still completely viable. And as you can see, this whole mass is a mass of tomato plants. Now we've kind of just left it this year, to be honest, more as a cover. We have nothing at the moment because we have cut back a little bit this year because of work things and live things getting in the way. We actually hadn't sowed an awful lot of stuff for this year, even though we've still got enough crops for us. But as you can see, this is a mass. Now, we do not recommend growing any tomatoes in this way like this at all. These, some of these may crop, we may get a few small ones, but in general, this is not the way forward. But we've kind of left it to fill this area. Now, the one thing I wish I had done before I had gone away is moved it away from some of the mange too and some of the other beans. They weren't that close before we went away. Now, it's only been four or five days, but I've got to admit a few days before we came on holiday, I hadn't been down here that much. So we'll leave these to grow and it helps for us anyway at the moment to reduce some of those weeds. They'll get pulled up later on and then hopefully the bed won't be too bad. But at least we can get some nice mange too in the meantime. These are all my broad beans. Now as you can see they're a real mess. They've got a lot of rust and other issues with them. Now we have had an awful lot of harvest off of this this year and we are grateful for that. Now these probably should have been the rest of them harvest about a week ago but we kind of missed the boat with one thing or another. Now there's a lot on here that is absolutely fine but majority of them yeah they're not in their best condition. More so this side the further end which I think was the Akadus actually grew much better for us this year. I think with the wet weather on the leaves all the time, I think it just 
helps towards more diseases and issues. But now I've got a little bit of a dilemma. Now, I'm trying to increase the biodiversity here on our plot. And at the moment, these are covered with ladybird larvae. Now, I can hardly see any black flies on this at all now, which means those ladybirds and the larvae have had an absolute field day. And it's been really good. And unfortunately, the rest of the diseases and pests have now took over. Now, normally I would pull all these up and actually put them onto the compost heap, but they are still covered with ladybird larvae. Now, what I may do, because these do need to come out, but I think I'm gonna give it another week or two of actually these staining in the ground. Now, this is not something I would advise to do because Obviously, there's things on this. I don't know whether it could spread to anything else. I don't think it could or would. But I really don't want to distract this larvae from growing into ladybirds. So I think, whether it's good or bad, I'm actually going to leave them as is. The last thing I want to do is to chop all this up, pop it onto the compost bay and actually kill off some of this larvae because I'm really, really trying to boost our population here on our allotment. When we first came on here, there was a lot of ladybirds and the second year, there was a lot of ladybirds. Last year, there wasn't as many. So I really want to give a boost to these little ladybirds. So I think, even though this bed really, really does need a good weed and these do need pulling and going onto the compost bay, I think I'm going to leave it for another week or two. And then hopefully by then, most of this larvae or the ladybirds themselves would have moved on to something else that's got black fly. Now, I don't mind doing that at the moment because to be honest, I've got nothing at the moment to go into this bed. Now, normally we've got lettuces ready to go in to take us through towards the end of the summer months, but I've got to sow some fresh lettuces, which to be honest, they take no time at all and they're very quick to germinate and to grow to a size that I can actually put in the bed. So I'm not overly worried too much about that. And as you can see, actually, I don't know whether you can see that. I've actually got a ladybird larvae on me now. So let's try and get him back on the plant. There we go. Now it might seem a bit daft to some of you seasoned vegetable growers out there. I think if I was in a rush to get some crops into this bed and I had a lot that desperately needed to go in, I probably would pile them up in a corner somewhere after pulling them out and let the ladybirds and their larvae do their thing. But at the moment, even though it's not stopping all the weeds, it is stopping some of them. So I think I am gonna just leave it, even though it really does make me feel a bit uncomfortable looking at such a mess with certain plants. Now, one of the things we did let go to bolt was this particular lettuce. It has got the most beautiful purpley bluey flowers on it. Now, this lettuce, I've got to admit, I actually didn't enjoy eating, but I'm glad that I left it in the ground. Now, one of the reasons I left it in the ground was because it's good for chicken fodder. I can pull it up and the chickens can go through it and pick off what they actually want to eat. But I'm glad I did leave some in the ground because this is absolutely stunning, if not a little bit spiky. But sometimes having things bolt very early on can have some benefits and I'm hoping that these are going to draw a few more pollinators to here in our allotment. Now this is my incredibly messy greenhouse at the moment and with us going away for those few days I had to pot an excess amount of water in here because even with the window open and the doors left open this still gets very hot when it's direct sun and we did have apparently a few hot days while I was away. And as you can see, I have got a lot here that needs to go into the ground. Now, these are some of my Swedes that I need to get in. That's some of my broccoli. 
which really it was ready to go in before I went on holiday. I just ran out of time. I've also got, <laughs> now this is a big mistake. Now I've also got some cucumbers here that are ready to go out. Now these were ready to go out way before we actually went away. And in fact, I never really grow them in these cells. Now the whole point was just to germinate them and put them into bigger in pots individually. And because I thought I'd lost all my cucumber plants outside, when in fact I actually missed four of them. I don't know how I did that, but I've still got four outside already. I kind of just wasn't in a major rush to pot these on. But as you can see, these are massive and they really do need to be dealt with. Now, cucumbers, squashes, they don't really like to be separated, especially at this size. But I think I have nothing to lose and I'm going to be having some beds empty very, very soon because I've got to harvest. I've got my carrots to do. I have got some other vegetation to come out. Obviously, all those broad beans eventually needs to come out. So I need something to go into those beds. I did plant some fennel in here and before I'd gone away, it actually hadn't germinated. And now it has and it's grown quite spindly. So I haven't got high hopes for that now either. It will go in, but I have got one fennel plant which had actually self-seeded last year. And the bulb on that is absolutely fantastic. I had actually put seeds into the ground as well a little while ago, probably four to six weeks ago. No sign of them at all. So it does look like the slugs and snails have got them as soon as they've come up. I do prefer my fennel sowed into the ground because I seem to get a better bulb, but you can definitely do it by transplant. You just have to make sure though that you are transferring it carefully and within the time. If you leave it too late, then it really doesn't like it and it does seem to struggle to grow. Then again, that fennel that self-seeded this year is definitely nowhere near as tall as fennel in previous years, but the bulb on it is fantastic. Now, all those seeds that I actually sowed that you watched in the previous video, if you did watch in that previous video, they all germinated fantastically before we went away. And then lo and behold, we've come back and then the local cat has dug up the whole area. Now we've got a newish cat here, a black one from one of the local houses somewhere that is doing an awful lot of damage here on our plot. Now we know it's him because we keep catching him doing it. Now, fair play, it has scared off all the other cats that were causing issues, but he is definitely more destructive than anything else and he keeps lying on the plants and we can see where he's been laid down in the sun, digging up areas and of course they keep burying their poop just underneath their soil. So as we're going in with our hands, we're coming across cat poop, which I absolutely detest. Now, some of the other things here that I really do need to get going in and it is way too long. Again, is some of it is charred. You can see here, I've got roots now these, here, these tall roots are actually barley seeds because I actually sowed a load of barley for the chickens as a little bit of green for them. That definitely needs to go in. And I have got a load of karobi. Now this was ready to go in about two, three weeks ago and we just haven't got round to doing it. That's how bad we actually have been this year. Now I have got some leaf damage on here and I have got a ton of aphids on these so i really do need to sort these out whether these come to anything we shall see but all my car roby my earlier sowings they were eaten really really badly by our slugs and snails and i had nothing left from all my earlier sowings so i'll get these in when i can get a bed spare and tidy it up and these definitely need to go in now the problem with these and the problem was with my swedes and a few of the little bits and pieces that I've got going on here. They actually do need to be covered with a bit of netting. Now, I haven't seen many cabbage white butterflies this year, but they will be along. And pigeons seem to love eating sweet tops too, which is really frustrating. So I've got a particular bed that I need to work on and to clear. But unfortunately, it's where my strawberries were last year. And those strawberries, even though I left only one or two in, have dramatically spread. 
you can see with this one it is incredibly weedy and we've got an awful lot of strawberry plants that are here now there wasn't that many strawberry plants here that we'd left but this bed seems to grow strawberries so so well unfortunately it's too wet for the fruits and we have a lot of the fruits actually die off but this is the bed that I need to sort out because it's one of the beds we can cover with netting now I hate netting I've been trying to move away from it a little bit but this year I have got certain things I've filled up all my netted beds already so I really do need to sort this out now we kept we had our kaylets here, which grew exceptionally well. And we've just left one more plant now because I want to collect it for seeds. Now we had six plants in there, I think it was five or six. And that was enough to give us some good seed. Once those seeds started to develop, I then took most of them out and just left the one because that's more than enough seed for us to grow our kaylets for this year. But all these weeds, all these strawberry plants, all that needs to come out of here because it really is out of control. And this is what happens. It doesn't matter if you've got a no dig bed or not. If you don't control your weeds, it will just be as bad as a unkept an allotment. Just because something's no dig doesn't mean it's something no weed. Now I've noticed the mare's tail this year has actually reached from the allotment over there under the greenhouse and into this bed. So I really am going to have to take the time to try and get all that out. But that's where the Swedes will come, the Karobi will come and anything else that we need netted. So again, that's another job to do. But to be honest, that's not the worst bed that we've got. And even though we do need to weed in it, those strawberry plants will be dug up and I'll put them into my strawberry beds. Because funnily enough, towards one end of this fence, of our fence line, on two beds, everything that we've planted there has actually died off. Now, it's weird because just in the one section across the two beds, I've had my strawberry plants die. All my spinach, all of it at the very same time, all went yellow and actually died. Now they weren't that big, they were about that big and they were producing healthy leaves for to use in our spinach recipes. But all of a sudden we came down the following day and it was just yellow and dyed. Now I, I have my suspicions and I do think something was added to that area without our knowledge that actually killed off those plants because I've never had strawberry plants die in a nice square area and I've never had anything like that happen with spinach all in one go with it being very healthy. Now that was the same seed that I had down the lower end. That was fantastic for our leaves this year until eventually it bolted. But anyway, I'm kind of trying to figure out what went wrong there. And I think I will plant something there to see if something had been sprayed accidentally, let's say from other plot holders that may have caused that damage in the bed. But one of the beds I do need to focus on is our pea harvest. Now I have got some more peas I need to pick here, but you know what? I'm gonna be really, really honest this year. I have not had the time to sit down and to shell all these peas. In general, it wouldn't be so bad, but what we find as in previous years of working on this allotment is pea moth. Now we've had it every single year of us being down here and the only way to stop pea moth is to net it and again I don't want to net everything and I think when it comes to certain heights I think the birds get attracted to it and it could end up with issues now I've just opened this pea and the very first pea that you can see which you probably won't see that clearly because of the focus on the camera is a pea moth now in general I've eaten so many things over the years that's probably had certain maggots in moths, larvae, whatever else as a kid, and you've just eaten it without even realising it. But I think when you're shelling peas and you get something like that, it's something that really does put me off. Now, when I'm doing my peas, it, it's at least two to three peas in each pod that's got this pea moth. So I think next year, 
at the moment until I can come up with a better way of dealing with it or a certain variety that may be immune to it. I doubt there is, but you never know. I'm not actually going to grow peas next year. Now, now we are going to harvest what's left here, but it is just so time consuming for me to go through each individual pea to actually find ones that haven't got these moths in. But it's a shame because these are incredibly sweet, good, tasty peas. I think, in fact, I'll harvest the rest of these peas, put on a TV show or two, and just sit there going through it. But in the future, it's not something I want to do at the moment. And in fact, I wish I had more time to be able to go and do something like that. But at the moment, I just don't. My life, ba my life work balance at the moment could be a little bit better. So this whole area, as you can see, it is just massively overgrown. This whole area here is just absolutely full of weeds, absolutely full of weeds. And you can see there's a lot of peas that are completely died back, but we have got some peas that have dried on the plants. We can use these as seed for next year, but these are completely gone now. These ones have definitely dried and the ones at the back end are starting to go as well. So that's another job. Hopefully, probably I'm going to do that for today. I'm going to leave those broad beans a little bit longer just for the benefit of that ladybirds. And I think I'm just going to focus on clearing this pea bed, harvest what I can and clear the rest. But to be honest, we've kind of neglected this area this year and it's just been one thing or another. But whatever we put in here next year, it will grow really, really well. And we probably will grow some kind of beans of some sort in this area. But for peas, I think I'm going to give next year a rest simply because of how long it to actually harvest those peas from the pod, even though they are immensely delicious. As you can see there's an awful lot to do and there's only a few beds that need a little bit of weeding the rest it's quite substantial i think i need to manage my time a little better than what i had as well i've been very exhausted this year and i tire out exceptionally easy which really hasn't helped me getting on with some of the work down here but we've got fennel to harvest we've got carrots to harvest i think these lettuces have finally beat me now but that's fine we have had some really good leaf crops off our lettuces this year. I've got sorrel that's ready to be picked and I've got sorrel in different places as well. And I've definitely got some beetroots to pick. So I think today, after enjoying a lovely relaxing fishing holiday, it's now time for me to crack on and get some of this work done. With those few jobs that need to be done, well, I'll say few, there's a lot. I've also got to check on my melons. And as you can see, they have really, really took off. And in fact, Jamie added some overhead strings as well, which you might not be able to see too clearly, but you can see the plants starting to grow up and over. Now we have a lot of flowers this year, but again, we've had a distinct lack of pollinators. Now I've been keeping the doors open for as long as possible just to allow them to enter and to hopefully pollinate these melons. Now I'm going to give it another couple of days. If I don't see any signs of pollination, I will self-pollinate with a little paintbrush and hopefully that will give us some melons. But they are looking really good and they seem to be exceptionally happy in this soil here, which I'm grateful for. 
and we've already started picking some gherkins off of this, these particular plants in here as well. We've got gherkins in here and we've got gherkins in the older greenhouse too. But that soil is much looser and it's quite hard to keep wet. But harvesting a few of our gherkins, using some of that coriander seed into a really nice pickle. Now I did sow some dill, but it's already starting to flower and it's only about this big. Now I've not had any luck with any coriander, dill, fennel or anything like that this year. And I really envy anybody that's had good luck with it so far. I might try and sow again to see if I can get a slightly later crop of these, but so far, not much luck fine with most of everything else but there is definitely certain things that have not liked our weather so much this year i've also got a load of chilies and peppers that i need to harvest too after having that little bit of time away i've come back and there is definitely ones to actually pick now one of the things that has done very well for us this year and it's unusual because peppers a lot of the times we kind of struggle with trying to get them to ripen in time but this year, they have ripened really, really quickly. Now, this is a capia pointed red pepper, and these all started to ripen while we were away. So these definitely need picking. I have got a little bit, a touch of a soft spot forming there. So I think for storage, this will be cut off, and the rest will go into the fridge and used for food, obviously, over the next day or two. We might even come up with something for tonight. So that's my update at the moment. A few days away really does cause a bit of an issue, a bit of a chaos. It was one of those things that I didn't really want to go away because it's key times between now and the end of August when an awful lot goes on. Now I've missed the boat with some of my sowings this year, but there is still stuff I can actually sow for later in the summer months to through the winter. And that is definitely something I need to crack on with. This polytunnel will not be filled through the winter. I am going to amend the beds, especially the side where the peppers are. I think I can do a lot better with the soil here than what there is at the moment. So that's it guys. I have got a load of chilies to pick and all the beetroots and other things that I really do need to pick. And I definitely need to do a bit of weeding. But thanks for watching guys and I shall see you in the next video.